Today, IoT is revolutionizing numerous industries, enabling automation of tasks that waste human effort, and the collection of vast amounts of data to improve performance and discovery of new revenue streams. The very first IoT device, a toaster of all things, went online in 1990. It took another nine years, however, before the term Internet of Things became a buzzword for devices connected to and controlled through the web. In the construction industry, IoT now allows for real-time syncing of all job site equipment, materials, and personnel. It is used to generate precision control of equipment and machines, to monitor continuously changing job site conditions, to manage the deployment and performance of equipment and vehicle fleets, and as wearables to improve safety and labor tracking. In short, through the use of IoT, construction companies can virtually eliminate costly uncertainties and waste, improve safety, and increase profitability. However, before building your cloud-based construction IoT platform, it is necessary to first identify and understand any potential security issues. The best and most effective way to understand the relevant threats and necessary security mitigations associated with creating a construction-specific IoT platform in Azure is to threat model the full environment with Threat Modeler. Out of the box, Threat Modeler comes with a complete Azure component library with Azure-specific threats and security requirements pre-mapped. For this video, we'll create our Threat Model based on the Azure recommended architecture for construction IoT platform. We'll begin our Threat Model with a blank diagram in Canvas. We begin by considering IoT devices and equipment deployed in the field, Collected sensor data and construction results data will be sent at regular intervals through a traffic manager service. We'll employ an application gateway, which will also serve as a load balancer. Data is initially sent to Azure Web Services, which will be hosted on a cluster of virtual machines. We can show this by first including the Web Services component in a virtual machine container. Containers are a special type of group in Threat Modeler in that they are defined by an architectural component. To do this, with the desired component selected, click the Group button in the Diagramming Toolbar. The default group type is a collection. We can change this by right-clicking the group and, from the pop-up menu, choosing Container. In the Container Definition dialog box, start typing the name of the defining component and select it when it appears. We can quickly add another copy of this configuration by selecting the container and clicking Copy in the Diagramming Toolbar. Then click Paste and position the new group as needed. We can mark our virtual machine cluster as the data ingestion portion of our IoT platform by including the containers in a collection. The ingested data will then be served to an Apache Cassandra cluster formed, again, with Azure Virtual Machines. We can again include these components in an appropriately named container. Another data set from the IoT devices may be sent to the IoT platform through an Amazon IoT Hub. Data coming through the Hub that can be processed in batch mode will be saved in a blob storage service. Incoming data that must be processed in real time, the so-called warm path, will be stored either in a Cosmo database or an Azure SQL database. Again, we can include these in a collection for clarity. We'll employ a Smart Construction Cloud Web application to allow our analysts and end users to view and analyze gathered sensor data and imagery. We can show this with a nested or change threat model. The benefit of using nested threat models is that we can efficiently reuse prior work and effectively build a comprehensive threat model of our full environment. At any time, we can open and modify the nested threat model. If we do update the nested threat models, Threat Modeler will automatically update every associated downstream threat models list of identified threats. Coming back to our current threat model, we can show that our web app is deployed within the Azure Cloud Services by including the nested threat model in a container. Batch jobs for data processing will be initiated on demand by users of the web application. The batch job will run in Apache Spark on HD Insight, with the analysis stored in the Cassandra cluster. And finally, we should add a component for our web app end users and analysts. 
Now that all the architectural components and groups have been added to the diagram in Canvas, the next step is to add the appropriate communication links. This is very easy to do in Threat Modeler. Simply click on a components icon and drag an arrow to another icon. When the click is released, Threat Modeler automatically adds a communication link. The default protocol is HTTPS. We can change this by right-clicking the link and from the pop-up checkbox list, selecting the desired protocols and deselecting any not wanted. Since this is a threat model of a cloud-based platform, we will use the default protocol throughout the rest of the diagram. The final step in creating a threat model is to add additional properties to select components as needed. For example, our application users will undoubtedly need to log into the website to use it. We could have imported all the threats from the nested threat model. However, for our purposes, let's simply add the appropriate properties to the container. We can start by adding widgets. These are the means by which an application obtains and maintains state. To do so, with the container selected, click the Add button in the General Information pane. From the pop-up menu, select Widgets. During login, users will most likely enter their credentials in an HTML form that communicates with the backend database. Thus, select Form in the widget field and set the backend field to Database. We can also anticipate that the login process will place a cookie on the user's device and change the session ID. So let's add the appropriate widgets for these. We'll also want to include the data elements for users logging into the system. By selecting several components at once, we can add the same properties to each. In the Cassandra cluster, for example, each virtual machine will handle sensitive transactions, may use window processes, and will probably cache data. We should also add components to the virtual machines for running a Linux NoSQL database. And with that, the threat model for our Azure Platform for Construction IoT applications is complete. If we navigate to the overview page, we can see that Threat Modeler has automatically identified 102 potential threats and 161 mitigating security requirements. By opening a threat group, we can get more information about the threats, including their status and their risks. By clicking on an individual threat, we can get detailed information on the threat, including any relevant threat intelligence. It took me, a non-security expert, about 15 minutes to create this threat model of an Azure platform as a service for construction IoT applications in Threat Modeler. If you'd like to learn more about threat modeling your Azure deployments, please visit us on the web at www.threatmodeler.com. And while you're there, be sure to schedule a live presentation. And of course, please take a moment to subscribe to the Threat Modeler YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.